eyes Mr. Newmobile here. When I was growing up I never really had all of the disposable income, so ever came to picking what phone to buy. Please subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Twitter, and you can purchase any Samsung Galaxy phones or Apple phones by clicking the links in the description. I defaced with the exact same dilemma I have plus a few hundred dollars to buy a new mid-range phone. What do I buy an older flagship phone and this question is just as important today. If you had $400. Now you have a choice. You can either buy 2020. Phones like the Samsung Galaxy, a 71 Xiaomi Nino 10 Lite or the up and find next to the light. But if you popped over to eBay. You could also find it for the same price. Older 2018 flagship phones like the Samsung Galaxy Note denying the Xiaomi the next three or the other, fine decks, all in new condition as well. So now I've sourced all of them which option she makes more sense. Well, for starters, if you care about this one point goes to the old phones in terms of the unboxing experience this can make sense. I mean even versus the cheap ones you get with a 71, if you went on the upper routes, think this means an August court case and headphone jack adapter, and it's a similar story which show me the My New 3 is in my suitcase, and, Apple even comes, with a wireless charger of its own, so the flesh is getting a point for this, but what about the fans themselves, will the she quite a few things that are comparable, like sizing yes top end phones, tend to be bigger, but newer phones are also bigger, so the size counterbalances out, and memory flagship phones tend to have more memory, but at the same time every couple years old phones, see a bump and how much memory is considered necessary, in almost every case, both the RAM and the storage capacity you get is back on, identical between these two camps phones, so it's squaring up to be quite a fair fight, but now is where we start to see differences I think. The first thing you notice when you pick up an older, flagship, is that it is a certain quality to it is parlayed high-grade materials, but it's also probably farther flagship, cut less corners get a whole load of subtle features that add up to a better feeling phone like a really high-end vibration motor for great haptic feedback, plus little things a piece of mind like an IP water and dust resistance fit is a premium experience from a couple of years ago, but with the mid-range in some shape or form, you lose some of this quality like Samsung A71 is made of plastic versus the class of the Note 9 or Xiaomi Note, 10. Light is made of glass which is good, but their flagship is still a level above that of the combined ceramic with 7000 series on the menu and in a similar vein, the upper findings to light. Feels well built, but it doesn't have the same density as the findings. These are subtle differences, but I would sit at up to something more noticeable, and it is not just quality OT. 9 times out of 10 flagship phone has some, sort of I have a better name for this, perfect or at least one defining characteristic, that is used in marketing to try and justify people paying the thousand dollars that they initially had to for a lot of these phones. 709 is the aspect really little tool providing a summary want to start this Xiaomi, is a slider phone put a bit of pressure on the screen. Give it a pull and outputs the front came out. By comparison, mid-range phones are practical, less showy when you building a phone for $400 price point. You can't afford to be as crazy with your focuses instead of just getting as many of the key things in as possible, so the state was 3 points of the flagships and 0 to the modern mid-range, and is more if you join us. By the way, the subject channel would be incredible which I have 5 million by the end of 2020, see if we can do anyways 5, and go as far as to say that you get better display quality. If you are folded to 100% clear cut because 100 this Galaxy, a 71 display looks modern, and I would take this little hole punch any day over the pretty chunky bezels on the notes. 9. I want to tell you the screen is better, but it just isn't it a little closer. It has a slightly over sharpens looking at from cheaper phones, was the note always displays images in what feels like an organic way, and this is important. For example, when you're taking photos on the note. 9. What you see on your phone is an accurate representation of what the camera is actually capturing, were either the same thing on your Galaxy similar in quality, but you see this trend again. When you look up the find next to the light screen is not that a told to find axis in almost all aspects older, and to top all of this off. Chances are if you plan older flagship phones, you getting a friend is also more powerful these 2018 flagship stores. All packing top shelf Snapdragon 845 chipsets least 2020 offerings that were equipped with newer the middle of the line equivalents, and what is not a state with those of quite overtaken the best 2018, at 12 Seviches look at these benchmark scores. Every one of these flagship phones scores higher than 2000 points in terms of overall multi-core performance. Every one of these mid-ranges is scores less, but this is where we start to see those mid-ranges gain back some territory, because there is a very important caveat to those numbers that these older top-end ships, they take more of a toll on your battery, that based on older 10nm fabrication process, versus the new ones based on 8 or even 7. I sometimes like to think that in terms of cause if your final reflection phone you can have a really big bulky but powerful engine under the hood over the newer. 
I would also say that cameras are true to see is that humans are little biased when it comes to looking at the past, well regular, remembering how good something actually was only really remembering how it made us feel so because the Galaxy Note 9 camera was amazing at the time, because it made us feel impressed, Misty would just assume that it's tons better than the current mid-range, because of course, those haven't evoked that same emotional response, but the reality of it is the trade blows pretty much every flagship phone for 2018. Just to cameras and with very low resolution cameras at that 12 or maybe 16 megapixels on the main sensor. Now compare that to the servants which all have no less than 4 cameras and maintenance, that a hell of a lot better resolutions of 6464 and 48 megapixels and just larger sense areas. These mid-range phones are stacked in the camera department. So what does that mean photos will take the two Samsung phones? The mid-range one comes with a newer, more advanced image processing engine, so I can actually sit with her in a dark room and still capture detail in the bright sky. If we move, as noticeably less noise, and it just picks up more of the textures on objects, providing good lighting, and if we jump over to Xiaomi's don't underestimate the benefit of having just more cameras you get an off-wide on these mid-ranges, is to take sleeping shots like this in the playoff, and a micro camera to get you closer to subjects, but as I've been using the side-by-side -side for the last week or so, is becoming quite clear to me that there's a lot of not-so-obvious things that flagship fans have the actually made the camera experienced higher quality camera experience you, always without fail effect faster shutter speed. Because these funds are more powerful and the capturing fewer pixels because of the low-res camera is sufficient right here the flowers moving pretty fast and the wind, but even then the older Notes 9 could still capture fast enough to fully preserve its details into the 71s, isn't quite as crisp as it should be, and optical image stabilization. Pretty much every flexible habit pretty much a new phone made for $400 will have it, and it does exactly what is on the 10 uses optics to stabilize your camera itself the kind of offset movements you're inevitably going to make when taking a photo, and their stabilization the Galaxy Note 9 can capture this nightmare photo for longer than a 71 without learning it. So when you look at the end result is that she managed to get more light in there, and therefore more detail in the an optical image stabilization, also means that video looks way better fit stabilization is as important as the resolution for video, and mid-ranges just don't have it also. The second camera that you do get on these flagships is almost always a proper 2x zoom camera, was for this mid-range is one of those 4 cameras is just that sensor. So for being fair. I would really say this is more a comparison of 3 versus 2 cameras as opposed to 4 versus 2, but I think the overall battle of cameras could go either way. And then call it a roll. So now that we've covered almost all the key pillars of the smartphone. It's looking like obliteration, and that is the first part of the conclusion that as far as the corporate experience goes, you are getting more if you go for an older flagship. But the 2020 mid-range comes with three key perks that aren't immediately obvious. Number one is the battery. I only mention of these newer phones have more power efficient chips that add as is that they degrade the mother not being used. So when you plan on the phone a few years ago in the state specifically told you that the battery has been replaced. Chances are you buying phones already has two years with the battery degradation and that's a huge deal because what's on the site and quite likely getting a firm that could last me through two full days of use on the site I'm getting phone where I might have to be conservative just to get one for their use as a matter of fact this Galaxy Note 9 I had to charge by 3 p.m. on the first day or setting it up great. The second thing is the software. If we say that these flagship fans getting two years of major Android updates and these mid-range is just getting one which is a rough trend. We tend to see them still mean that the mid-range is getting a whole extra year of new features, and so is what I would say the decision ultimately hinges on the third. Well you can get $400 in order flagship phone more than likely to get that you can be shopping on eBay or some equivalent, so you miss out on peace of mind. You can quite easily limit the chances of things going wrong by initialing the trusted sellers and going with ones with lots of feedback, but those are the sites after 30 or 60 days of a very tough time returning anything or getting any customer support soul wearing a minority. We are tech people with the kind of people who would be willing to take a risk if it means we might get better features. But for the vast majority of the population. I would estimate that their top priority about screen quality and camera quality is I want my phone to just work on problems so people like this. The value of having a printed warranty and customer support helpline physical store you can go back into and talk to people about with is pretty important and this you don't get one final reflection phone unless you find a way to buy it install. But it probably will be as cheap as is online, if you like this video that I got a video here that I think you love, and I should probably caveat this by saying Apple is a very different way of positioning its mid-range phones, so the comparison is different. Please subscribe, like the video, comment thanks for watching see you on my next video one piece.